In this video, I'll do a quick recap of some of the terms that we introduced in the last couple of videos, and then I'll go into uh, row buffer management in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we introduced terms such as you know dim and rank, bank, and array last time, and these essentially form a hierarchy in terms of how data is stored in your memory system, right? So data is first scattered across multiple dims, uh, multiple ranks. Each rank is itself partitioned into multiple banks. Each bank is partitioned into multiple arrays, and so on. Okay, and you know because of various electrical issues, you can only place a few dims and a few ranks on a given memory channel, right? So if you place a lot of dims or ranks on a memory channel, then that bus or that wire has to drive a larger load. Okay, and if you're driving a larger load, then it means that you cannot run as fast. Okay, so that would limit your uh, your bus frequency. Okay, so to keep the bus frequency high we've also had to reduce the number of ranks and dims that can be placed on that bus. Okay, so in, in, in modern times you can only place perhaps a couple of dims on the channel which means you can only accommodate say about four ranks. Alright, so you know ranks are you know one way to increase capacity. Okay, and so you know how you organize the rank dictates how much capacity your memory system can support and it also dictates the energy consumption on every single axis. Okay, so when you're organizing a rank, we saw that you could possibly use you know eight by eight chips, or you could use you know four by sixteen chips, or you could use say sixteen by four chips, and so on. All right. So if you assume that each memory chip has a fixed capacity, right? So if I assume um, a two gigabit memory chip capacity in each case then you'll see that each of these organizations leads to a different capacity right so in this case you have four DRAM chips so that's a total capacity of eight gigabits or one gigabytes whereas in this case you have sixteen of these two gigabit chips which is thirty two gigabits or you know four gigabytes so if you're trying to support a high memory capacity and you're doing this with the constraints that you can only have a few ranks on your channel then you would go with an option like this. So this is you know, good in terms of capacity. But if you look at the energy usage of each of these cases, right? so when, when the CPU makes a request for a cache line, all the chips in that rank are activated and all of them work together to provide the entire cache line. Okay, So in the first case, you will end up activating four different DRAM chips, whereas in the last case, you end up activating 16 different DRAM chips. Okay, so clearly this one is best in terms of energy efficiency. It expends the least amount of energy to service one cache line request. Okay, so these are considerations when you're trying to organize your uh, your memory space into different ranks. Okay, then we also talked about banks and arrays and we basically said that we are introducing the concept of banks to try and boost memory level parallelism. Okay, so the more banks you have, the more operations that can be performed in parallel and that improves performance that that improves your bus utilization we also talked about the fact that a bank is made up of multiple different arrays okay and you know if you recall at the very start of the discussion i said that we are using dram technology to boost capacity to boost density okay so we said that you know dram gives you an 8x density advantage over sram and so you know all of these DRAM chips have always been optimized for density. They've all been optimized for low cost. You're trying to pack in as much of storage as possible within a given silicon area. Okay, and so when you when you take a bank and you break it up into multiple arrays, okay, each array has some peripheral circuits, right? So it has decoders which are used to identify like the specific row or the specific column, right? And then you have you know sense arms at the bottom. And, and so on, right? So every single array has a certain amount of, of peripheral circuits, you know, many of which are constant, regardless of the size of your of, of your array. Okay, so if you want to maximize your storage density, you're better off implementing really large arrays because it amortizes the the overheads of these constant peripheral circuits. Okay, so you know these DRAM chips that are heavily optimized for density and cost tend to use you know really large arrays so that you know most of the silicon area is being used for cell storage and not for peripheral circuits okay so when you access an array we talked earlier about how an entire row is read into the sensams or the row buffer okay so if you use larger arrays you will have larger rows which means your eventual row buffers will also be extremely large 
Okay, and this is why we said that when you make a request for a 64-byte cache line, what ends up happening is an entire row buffer is read, and that row buffer is as large as say 8 kilobytes or you know 16 kilobytes in some cases. Okay, so this is referred to as overfetch, where to make a sing single um, cache line access, you have to read a whole bunch of data into your row buffer. Okay, and this is the reason why it is you know why uh, we end up having these really large row buffers. Uh, it is because these DRAM chips are optimized for density. But as I also said earlier, you know sometimes having a large row buffer is helpful, uh, especially for applications have high spatial locality. So if there's high locality, you will be touching your neighboring elements, which end up being row buffer hits. Okay, but you know on average, people have observed these programs, and they've noticed that a large row buffer, you know, such as uh, one that contains 128 cache lines usually only has about four row buffer hits. Okay, so eight kilobytes is enough enough to accommodate 128 different you know, 64 byte cache lines. But out of these many cache lines, only four are usually returned back to the CPU before you move on to a different row in that same bank.